to food revolution and super next extra when we were doing that contest i was not in control whatsoever it was scary i feel like my behavior while i was texting and driving would not be safe for the road the test was very hard when the brake light came on and i realized that was a car i just had an accident until this point, I thought I could master both skills of texting and driving. It was definitely a wake-up call. I wanted to respond to the text and also was trying to not run into the grass. I've been very lucky that nothing has happened uh, to me or, you know, my kids um, because of me texting and driving. If everybody went through this test, they would see why they should not text and drive. This is Jared Gall. He's an editor at uh, Car and Driver magazine who tested the effects of texting and driving on three of our viewers who all think that they can multitask and think they were doing it really well. So walk us through the results, will you? So what we found is dramatic. Um, I mean, while people are texting and driving, they're simply not paying attention to the car. Their uh, reaction times increase, and they're just not in control. Uh, we have this graph. Okay. Uh, the top bar is uh, reaction time, 40 miles per hour uh, baseline, and the below that is texting. And you see a 22-foot difference um, between the time you hit the brake pedal. You know, that's 22 feet very easily be the difference between a close call and one of the stories we've heard today. Yeah, a close call and somebody's child. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, how do you all feel about looking when you see that? Eye-opening. But you know, I don't get you. I really don't get you. <laughs> and I'm not here to put you on the spot. But you said on that tape, you said, I have been texting and I looked up and saw myself in the other lane. Yeah. Would That's you embarrassing. It's, it's absolutely changed my life since that that driving test uh -huh. and I I am I feel like I'm incredibly lucky that yeah. nothing has happened to me or my children or someone else yeah and, and you do this with your children in the car I have yeah you have so are you born again right now uh, absolutely I want to go and and do something with my city and I want to make the voice heard and I want yeah. to start a movement yeah, and you need to spread the word. I will. You have a responsibility to yep, do that. Absolutely. Yeah, because you your wake up call actually woke you up without having to kill somebody. Yeah. Yeah. It's something abs a hundred percent preventable, just like that was said 100 earlier. One hundred percent preventable. Mm -hmm. What you said about your son's death. Yes. Well, I thought I could do it. I'm gonna admit because everyone in my age group, from high school and college students, everyone is doing I know. it, and I guarantee, if all across America, all the teenagers yeah. that went through what I went through, I'm 120% positive they wouldn't be texting or talking on the phone because that text or call about whatever it is we're talking about these days isn't worth your life, let alone what someone else's. But well, weren't you pretty cocky about it before? Yeah. yeah. I could text without looking. I did that 80% of the time be behind the wheel because I, I thought I could do it. Oh, we know you were pretty cocky. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cocky about it, saying, you know, pre pre I feel pretty confident I can do both. Yeah. I was really co uh, cocky about it. My um, my wife would always tell me, say, you know, you have our family in the car, you have our kids, you're putting them at risk. And I would look at her and just like, don't worry about it. I got this. I'm a, I'm a great driver. I can multitask. And when I took that test, it was a big, big wake-up call. It was a surprise because I went into the test thinking that, you know what, I'm that guy you're talking about. You know, I can do it all. And when I got out of that car, I realized that could have been me up there losing one of my kids from losing my wife because I didn't pay attention. Um, so when I got home, I put the phone down. I, I haven't I haven't texted while I was in, uh, behind the wheel since since the test. So it was Good a big wake up call. Good for you. And as his wife, wouldn't it infuriate you? Yes. Yes. I mean, he is the driver in the family. He's the one we get into his car. My, he's taking the kids all over the place. So yes, absolutely. And his attitude, I mean, on the tape, you didn't see half of it, but he's a football player who can be defensive and, and yeah. handle it, you know? Yes. So yes, this was definitely much needed for me because my heart aches for those families. And it could be my four kids or myself. Or yourself. Thanks, Jarrett, Sean, Carly, and Jen. We'll be right back. At three on KCRA three. Nate's on two new assignments. He's taking over for a stay-at-home mom and a high school reunion to remember to this viewer with Rocco Rick Springfield. Tomorrow. Uh, 
I've wanted to do this show for a very long time, and it is my prayer that this, this show, this day, will be a seminal day in your life. Let it be the end, the end of you using a cell phone or sending a text message when you are behind the wheel of a moving vehicle. Now, take another look, if you will, at the faces of the children, the husbands, the fathers, the mothers who were killed by a distracted driver who was on a cell phone or was sending a text when they took those lives. Now I want you to look at these faces. These are the loved ones who are left behind now to carry the pain caused by somebody who was on a cell phone or writing a text, a distracted driver. They have to carry that pain for the rest of their lives because their loved ones are no longer here. Think about that when you get behind the wheel of the car and go to pick up your cell phone. Don't tempt fate. That text or call can wait. Believe it. Thanks, everybody.